Hi again, in this lecture I'm going to cover derivatives of the rotation matrix. So let's look at the time derivative of the rotation matrix. Recall that for the special orthogonal group, R times R transposed is the identity. And then taking the time derivative and using the product rule, we get ddt of r times r transposed is equal to ddt of the identity. So r dot times r transposed plus r times r dot transposed will equal zero, since the identity matrix, uh, when we take the derivative with respect to time, will be zero. And then rearranging it, we get r dot r transposed is negative r, r dot transposed. And so for the case where our rotation is the identity matrix, we get r dot is equal to negative r dot transposed. And this form means that our time derivative of the rotation matrix is skew symmetric. So let's take a look at what a skew symmetric matrix is. Suppose we have a 3D vector of angular velocities. That is omega given by individual uh, velocities about the x, y, and z axes, omega x, omega y, and omega z which is in a set of real values in three dimensions. Then the skew symmetric matrix from this vector is given by the following. It is a three by three matrix with zeros across the diagonal. And you will notice that the elements X, Y, and Z are on the off diagonal elements. It can be seen from this that the transpose of this skew symmetric matrix is equal to its negative, and that the skew symmetric matrix will equal the negative transposed. And again, we showed that the time derivative of the rotation matrix is r dot is equal to negative r dot transposed. Here's a little side note about skew symmetric matrices and cross products. So recall that the calculation for instantaneous linear velocity of a rotating body is given by V equals omega times R. That is the cross product of these two vectors. This can be re rewritten as V is the skew symmetric of omega times R. So by exploiting properties of the skew symmetric matrix, we can rewrite that V is negative skew of R times omega. So now let's return to the time derivative. The time derivative of the rotation matrix is skew, to, skew symmetric such that r dot times r transposed is equal to negative r times r dot transposed, which we said can be reduced to r dot is equal to negative r dot transposed. And we define r dot, the time derivative, as the skew symmetric of the angular velocity vector omega times the rotation matrix. So omega here is a three-dimensional vector of the angular velocities about x, y, and z. And by substitution into this equation, <coughs> we can see that we have skew of omega times r times r transpose, which will give the identity, and this here which we know we can exploit using properties of skew symmetric matrices, which will give this. And this again will give the identity matrix. And so therefore, the skew of this vector omega is equal to the skew of the vector of omega. So this equation here is correct. So let's talk about propagation of rotation. So the rotation matrix can be propagated for very small steps of delta t. So the rotation at time t plus delta t is approximately equal to the rotation at time t plus delta t times the time derivative of the rotation. But again, this isn't quite accurate because adding two rotations does not make another rotation. So let's try and exploit one of our properties of the special orthogonal group. So if we look at this by its transposed, this is essentially saying this is essentially saying r times r transposed. We expand it out and we have this horrible equation which can re be reduced down to this. And notice that this is not in the special orthogonal group. <coughs> 
This should be the identity, but we have all these extra terms here. So if we take the limit of either delta t or omega to zero, we will see that this will become zero or this will become zero, and hence we're left with the identity. So this propagation of rotation is only valid for very small values of delta t or omega. And errors accrue with subsequent propagations, and therefore we need to renormalize the column vectors if we try to do this. Now let's look at the partial derivative of the rotation matrix. So we have a joint variable here, q, and we want to know the effect of q on a proceeding rotation matrix r in our kinematic chain. The time derivative of the rotation matrix is skew symmetric. We just proved this. So r dot is the skew of this angular velocity vector omega times by the rotation matrix. But using the chain rule, we know that r dot must be partial r over partial q times by dq over dt, because this will cancel out. And we have dr over dt. But the angular velocity about the joint is the axis of rotation multiplied by the joint speed. That is, omega is equal to the axis of rotation for this joint variable here, multiplied by its velocity. And this will give omega. So we can substitute this back into the first equation. So we're going to put this back up into here. And we get r dot is the skew of the axis of rotation multiplied by the rotation matrix multiplied by the joint velocity q dot. And therefore, it can be seen that the partial r over partial q, the partial derivative of the rotation matrix, is the skew symmetric matrix of the axis of rotation for the joint multiplied by the rotation matrix. So this will give us the effect that this joint variable here has on this proceeding rotation matrix in the kinematic chain. All right, so we have three cases for the partial derivative of the rotation matrix. So we have a kinematic chain of our robot arm, and we want to know the effect that this lower joint has on this higher joint and the reference frame R, the rotation matrix, on this joint here, then partial derivative of rotation matrix I with respect to joint QJ is the skew symmetric for the axis of rotation for joint J multiplied by the rotation matrix I, assuming that J is less than or equal to I. So this joint variable has to be below the rotation matrix in the kinematic chain. Conversely, if we want to take the partial derivative of a rotation matrix below our joint variable, so j and j minus 1, then this has no effect, and so it must be 0. So partial r i over partial q j must be 0 if j is greater than i. So the joint is higher in the kinematic chain. It has no effect. Then we can also consider prismatic joints. So for a prismatic joint, we can see there's only translation, and so the rotation has not changed. And therefore, the effect of this joint on the rotation is zero. So to summarize the derivatives of the rotation matrix, the time derivative is skew symmetric. It has this form. The skew symmetric matrix uh, is given by this form here, which is zero across the diagonal, and then the x, y, and z elements on the off diagonals. Rotations can be propagated, but only for very small time steps. And the partial derivative is conditional, where we have these three different conditions.